um, I really like to ride horses, and um, I also used to live in the jungle in Costa Rica. And I also was, in, I had, I was in love with a heroin addict who, um, I didn't know that he had become a heroin addict because I was living in the jungle, and he called me on the uh, on Valentine's Day to profess his love and said he wanted to come down and spend some time in the jungle with me. So I said, sure, come on down. <laughs> Little did I know that in his his um, good idea was that he was going to come to the middle of the jungle and go cold turkey. So, uh, <laughs> so I'm, I'm in the middle of the jungle, and I'm living up in this gulf, and it's, it's not accessible by car. It's only by boat. And it takes about, on a good day, about a 45-minute boat ride to get up to where I was living into this little town called Golfito, which was, is actually the headquarters of Dole, and there's just banana boats, like humongous boats full of bananas everywhere you look. And so he came down, and he started with, to withdraw, and I realized that it was probably a good idea for me to leave. So I ditched him in the jungle, and I was going through a whole what am I doing with my life crisis. And um, so I, I heard of this little town called Pavonis. Now, I'm on the, on the Pacific, southern Pacific side, about... 45 miles north of Panama. So I go to this town called Pavonis, and I'd heard that you could get a little cabina for 10 bucks for a whole week. And this is about 15 years ago. So I get on this, it's an old American school bus, and it's a two and a half or three hour ride over, you know, the mountains, and it's all a dirt road and huge boulders. And I get into this little town called Pavonis, and I'm going to fast for, for a week and meditate and figure out where I'm going with my life. And I've left this junkie in this other part of the jungle. And so I, I make it for, to about seven days, and I've, I've fasted, and, and then I've started on a fruit diet. And I also, you know, if you've ever lived in the tropics, you know that the fruit is insane. And I didn't want to leave because I couldn't stop eating the guanabana. So I was like, should I go back to America, or can I stay here and just eat tropical fruit for the rest of the So I, I, and I, and I heard that, that there was someone that had a horse for $3 for an entire day. So in, in American standards, that's a bargain. So I get this, I go and I find this guy and I get this horse. Well, if any of you ride, you probably know riding in shorts is not a good idea. And I didn't have any long pants with me because I'm in the jungle and I only had shorts and probably flip-flops. And so I find this guy and I get this horse and he brings it to me and um, and so I get on the horse and I, and I, the minute my butt hits the saddle, it starts rearing. And, and, I, and, I, you know, and I manage to calm it down, and I get off the horse, and I was like, you know, your horse is crazy. I, I can't ride your horse. And he's like, no, 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 it's okay, it's okay. And we're, he's, we're speaking in bad, you know, I'm in bad Spanish, and he's in good Spanish. And I'm a, a Grina, and he's not. And so he calms it down. He's like, get back on the horse. It's, it's good, it's good. So I get on the horse, and again, the minute my ass hits the saddle, it bolts. And I'm doing everything that you do, you know, north of the equator to stop a horse. I'm thinking, maybe it's opposite. I'm really close to the equator. <laughs> so, so, but, so we run, you take off through this, somebody's yard, and I almost get decapitated by a clothesline, and I get off, and I'm like, really, I can't, you keep the money, take your horse, it's fine. And he says, no, 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 I'll come back. And he comes back, and he has a fit. It, and it, the, the, it was just a rope bridle for this horse, and, you know, there was no leather or anything. It was a handmade saddle with these crazy carved wooden stirrups. And so I get back on this. He, he comes back, and he has a bit, and this horse is very sensitive to the bit. And I get back on the horse, and by then I already knew I, I, was, I was a disaster on the backs of my legs. And I had pulled my shorts down really low so nobody could see and I basically had skinned the entire backs of my legs off. And I still, I rode this horse for three hours at full speed down the Pacific coast, almost to Panama, with huge palm trees and rocks and dolphins frolicking in the waves. And I made it back, and I could barely walk, and I shuffled around like this. And there were bugs sucking the blood off the back of my leg. And I had to take a bus the next morning at 5.30, a school bus, sitting like this with this much of my ass on this seat. And part of this ride included being on a, 
on like a barge float thing that the bus would pull onto over this fast moving river. That there was just a, a like a hydraulic cable that pulled the bus across, and everyone had to get out and stand like this because there wasn't very much room. Because if it <laughs> fell, everyone would drown in the bus. And um, <laughs> anyway, um, that's only part of the story. But I survived <laughs> and I made it back to America. And um, and I I've had other existential crises since then. But, um, <laughs> Not including a heroin addict.